Hi, welcome to the video. So today I'm going to teach you a dozen different ways to play a diminished seventh arpeggio. Before we jump into that, I'm going to play an exercise I wrote last night that combines a few of those shapes together to kind of give you a preview of some of the shapes we're going to do. Okay, so basically a diminished seventh arpeggio is just a minor arpeggio, so it's got a flat third, it's got a flat five, and it's got a double flat seven. So it's all stacked minor thirds. Now, when you're playing minor third, there's really only two ways to do it if you're not crossing a B string. You can reach forward for it, which gives you a three fret move forward, or you can reach back when you change strings, which goes back two frets. So since this is all minor thirds, it's just going to be one combination of that or another. Now, I'm not going to move forward more than once in these fingerings. You could, but that's going to put you just moving across one string. Um, there will be some that I will move back mul multiple times on. So it's how combining those forward and backwards that creates the different fingerings. So first what I'm going to do is, before we jump into that, so basic fingering would just be to go forward and then come back and just kind of alternate that as you move across, which gives a nice shape because it's two notes per string and this is probably the most common one and it's the same shape, just moved forward one fret until you hit the B string and then it's moved forward two frets. Now, as far as fingering go on this, the first way I learned this was to use the pinky on each one on this side. And there's nothing wrong with that. It's, to me though, if I'm doing love that practicing, my pinky kind of gets wore out. So I kind of, especially when I'm going to switch directions, if I'm going to be coming back right away, rather than having to shift and shift, I get, I'll use a combination of the third and fourth finger. But sometimes, especially on the descending pattern, when I'm coming back from a different shape up top, um, I might use different fingerings. So for example, you can use the pinky and third finger. And that works perfectly fine. But you might be positioned where you're on your third finger, in which case you might use the third finger to the third finger, or you might use the pinky on both those. There really isn't, uh, in my opinion, right or wrong on this one. Some scales and arpeggios, I always do the same way on the same shape. Um, but this one, I think you, know, you can build up speed with any of those, and they can all be done cleanly, so pick the, what works best for you. And then one figurine might be one, and then a different one might be a different one, and that's okay. Okay, so let's jump into this now. So I'm going to take the upper strings first, the first three, four strings. So when I'm doing this, um, you can start on either, in this case, I'm going to start on the fourth string, so I can start on either side of it. I can start on the, in this case, a B note or the D note. Uh, so I can start moving forward, or I can start moving with the backwards one. It doesn't really matter. Uh, now all this will be on the tablature, which I'll show at the end, but you can also always download on my Patreon site for free. You don't have to be a member. But if you want to become a member, it's only a minimum of a dollar a month. So I'd appreciate it if you did become a membership. But I want it to be open to everyone, whether you're a member or not. Okay, so if I'm doing something, I'm just going to start on this side of it, but you could add that on too. So first one will be the one where I'm just alternating, just like I was doing on the lower octaves. So I'm shifting to a second finger in this case because of the B string that puts me in position to play this next note, compared to here where I'm using the third finger so I can reach that note more easily. Again, if I want to add that note, that'd be fine. So that's the first option. Uh, the next option, what I'm going to do is I'm going to put this note back. So I'm going to go forward here and then go back twice. Now, it doesn't really matter if you're using the third finger here or the pinky. Sometimes you'll see this, this slide on this note. In that case, I'd probably use the third finger. But if I'm not shifting positions, then I will usually use the pinky. Uh, okay, so the next option, I'm going to throw another note back on this. So now, instead of going here, I'm going to put this note back here. Which gets moving backwards two notes, just like the previous one. But this time it's crossing the B string on the second note versus, i oh, sorry, the would actually be a third note if you're calling the first one, I'm sorry, no, versus the second note on this one. 
So the shape looks different, but it's basically the same idea. And of course, you can always go back to that note, like I said. And the last option, there's four options basically starting from this position. Uh, so now I'm going to reach back with all the notes. So, and when you're doing this, you can either use pinky or third finger here. Again, personal preference. Or if you just want to get more of a straight sweep, you could just come right back without using that note at all. Uh, um, this shape, I feel, has potential, but is a little bit less practical. It's not as easy to do. It's kind of a stretch. You have to use all four fingers uh, than the other three shapes. So the other three shapes, I'd say, at least myself, I use more. Okay. Now, what I'm going to do is basically take those same shapes and put them in the bass, uh, so in the lower octave. So if I consider this my first note, I'm just going to go down here. Now, whether I start on this note or start on the one on this side, again, the B and D, it doesn't matter. So I'm going to do that first shape that I did in the bass. And then I'll go ahead and do the top part with that first option too. Okay. Now what I'm going to do is just add that second option, but it's keeping the first, same thing in the bass. So now I'm doing the one that goes here on the high. Okay, now I'm going to do the, the third option. So I'm reaching back to this shape. Still the same top part in the bass. And then I'll do that fourth option. Okay, so that's one set of four. Now what I'm going to do is I'm just going to switch what grouping I'm doing in the bass. So I'm going to take basically this shape where I'm moving forward to and then back to. So move forward to, then going back to. Now this puts me in a different position. Uh, but I'm still going to use the same four shapes up top. They just will be back here instead of up here. So if I get to this point, again, I'm overlapping into the same type of position. So the one, that first option, we move forward. And then you can come back. Okay, now I'm going to do the same thing in the bass. But I'm going to do that second option. Both those work good on that. Now this next one, I don't think works as good, but I'm going to include it, because what you have to do is here is shift, because I'm already doing, uh, moving back here, so then it forced me to move back three times on that. Now this next one, you end up having to, uh, I'll just play it, I don't really like, but I'm going to include it just for, you know, being complete, so this is doing this one, but because again I'm already moving back here, I have to move back with my first finger and then come back. So I probably wouldn't personally use that one, <clears throat> but <clears throat> it's in the tab if you want to try it out. The next grouping up top, this is probably my favorite grouping, <clears throat> excuse me, up top is basically a third option. So <clears throat> I'm doing Again, looks different because of the B string, and then I'll go ahead and do the same thing as far as the four options on top. So again, at this point, I jump into the one that moves forward. Then I'll go into the next one, which goes back to, and then I'll go into that next one, third option, and th then I go into that last one, and there's the four options there. Now I'm not going to put that one in the bass because on the crossing B string it throws a forward one. You're already covering one, two, three, basically six frets on here. So when you go up here, I'd be covering seven frets. And it'd be all those minor thirds, but without being thrown forward, that's a tough thing to move through efficiently. So I probably won't use that one. So I'm not going to include that in the bass. Um, so let me show you the exercise now, slow. So you can kind of spot some of the ones I'm doing now. So that's the exercise done slow. Some of these, like when you come coming up here, if you want to hit that two times to in order get the sweeping better, that's fine. Or you can just hit a single time. 
that's personal choice, in my opinion. Uh, so here's the <coughs> exercises up top on that. And then the first line is those four options in the higher octaves. Then the four options on the in the lower octaves on this line, which again, that last one I go ahead and tabbed out, but I wrote that I don't really think that was a practical one. So it's up to you. You can play it though if you want. And then I show the combination. So basically I showed the first octave in the low, low area and then the second one then you come back and play that and go to the second option third option fourth option and there are the rest of the different possibilities so if you like the video please um, subscribe if you haven't click like uh, share it leave a comment any of that stuff helps me with the algorithm and i'm you know trying to build up my channel so i would really appreciate if you can do any of that anyways thanks for watching